Hi, welcome to my studio. We're going to be working in my Delusions Large journal and we're going to do something a little different but not completely different and I hope you're in for the ride. So I started this out by using this stencil and I did some spraying. So I put some sprayings down, then I put the stencil down, sprayed through it, but now there was spray ink all over and then I turned it over, gave it a press, and that's how I got this. And it's nice and dry so we can get going. So this is just one of those backgrounds that I'm excited to get using. And if you want to see how I did that background, just let me know in the comments and I can show you this background step by step. So I've got some clips just to kind of hold these guys down. How are you doing? I'm Julie Torrens. I do mixed media, art journaling. So we've got flowers. So I've got some flower stamps. I've got some different crayons that I thought we're going to be using. So I'm going to set these up here, but I'm going to start out with some gelatos. You can see this edge and that edge isn't bad, but I'm going to be doing a double page. So I want to just sort of start a border. It won't be the finished border by any means. And I thought I would start out with this color. It looks blue to me. Nothing's easy. <laughs> this is my uh, Faber-Castell Gelatos and it's called Brights. So this, I think it's called Blueberry, but let's look. Oh, Boysenberry. It looks quite blue to me. So I'm just gonna set these aside, but they're handy if we wanna use them again. And I'm gonna start out by putting it on the edge and I'm going to try to kind of rub it out. I'm going to try to, I've got water, I've got watercolor uh, brushes. One of these kinds of ways we're gonna get this around the edge. So here I go, I'm just gonna put a little here and see what I can do with my finger, that's great. I think that's how I'm gonna start, is just starting close to the edge and I realize you may not see the whole book, but I hope you can see the part I'm working on. And then just rub it in like this. Now this one left me more of an edge than that one did. So let's see if I can, yeah, I think I was just a little stingier. So let's get some of this on. And I'm gonna go all the way around. And this is one of those things that it can be boring, but I want you this time to see the process. So how are you doing? What are you doing? We are at the end of July and I'm excited. I'm up to 125 subscribers. So I think the video came out where I talk about our giveaway. August 5th is going to be the deadline for you to comment on that particular video. And I'm not going to all my videos, just that one. And anyone that commented, and that's the video that's a magazine collage. And I did it with uh, the lady with big feet. <laughs> so you can find that. I'll try to link it in here. I think I figured out how I can do that that you can take a look and comment on that video. Look at how far we've gotten already. Yep. And I'm not looking to say, oh, I, I wanted an inch from the edge. No, I'm just putting it where, where my heart feels like it. And that's it. Nothing precision, nothing pre-planned, just getting it on there. But I'm liking the framing that it's doing and I'm liking the color. And I'm liking the fact that I can still see the background through it. That's, that's a cool bonus. So are you working in an art journal? Or maybe you've got yourself a nice sketchbook that you've been out doing. I joined a Facebook group that's in my area. I don't completely understand it yet, but, uh, but I joined. I don't know what I'm doing. Oh, that's the way I roll. It is a plain air sketching group for Western Michigan. And so there is apparently 
a universal group. Now, I didn't quite grasp if they've already registered. I think they've registered. Have they been accepted? I don't know. But the mission of this group, the universal group, is to have people of every medium, of every skill level, to draw what they see where they are. So these will be things I'm not going to, you know, for instance, take a trip to California and then post what I make in that group. No, I am just for Western Michigan for this group. But you can go out and then you're to have a photograph of what it was that you were plain airing. But the idea is that you've done this on site and you're sharing a bit of where you live to this universal group. Now, how it gets to the universal level, see, like I said, I don't completely understand it, um, but they want to just have a site where people are sharing their corner of the world through art. And so if you want to look at a particular city like, you know, Leeds in England or, or Wales or something, then you can just go to this and you can see the artwork of people who have been drawing, sketching, watercoloring, whatever it is, on site, and this is how they see the world. I just think it's it's great fun. Now, they've got some group get-togethers, but so far, the ones I have seen, and they, I mean, they make plans. Um, they've got a site picked out. They've got a, an area, like a pavilion or whatever that you're to all meet up at and you know, it's, it's, it's organized. And so let's not spill the coffee and let's move this out a little bit. So you, uh, are supposed to meet up with this group. Well, unfortunately the meetups that they've got so far are on days that I'm working my day job. So I cannot attend, but I did comment. So they know that I'm looking and I, you know, stated these are not days that I can, that I can be there, but I'm going to be following. And it is fine if I go there just on my own day and I can submit, you know, it's, it's not like it's a deadline for the particular artwork. It's just an organized way that you can be doing plain air with other artists, which is very appealing to me. Get to know more people in the area that I'm living and, see other people's art. Oh, I just, I'm hoping that there'll be a day and who knows, maybe by then I can be videoing some of that action. Wouldn't that be fun? You can see us doing art out in Western Michigan. And uh, I've got, you know, an easel, but it's certainly not portable, but I do have a, what I call a sketchboard. And it's about, I'm guessing, maybe two foot by three foot. It's got two big clips at the top that you can put your sketching paper, you can put whatever you want, you know, that'll fit under those clips. And then you've got this big board that you can work off of. And, you know, you could set it on the ground, you could prop it up on your lap, just whatever you want to do. So I'm pretty excited. I want to get started on this, but, you know, obviously it just wasn't the time for me to start yet because I cannot take off of my work to go plain air. I'd love to, but that just wouldn't be fair to my clients. So no, I'm not going to do that. But anyway, something I just wanted to share with you. And if there's something like that in your area, I mean, this is universal. So, and it's a Facebook group. And all I put in to the Facebook group search was a plain air sketching and it's not plain like an airplane it's not p-l-a-n-e i may have it wrong but it's something like p-l-i-e-n something like that plain air and it just means that you're working on site um, people have been submitting other places that they've been just you know to to submit and oh you know it's just one more beautiful than the other and it is definitely different mediums, different skill levels. And, you know, that's just gives you confidence and it looks good. Okay. So we've got this
blue all the way around and I'm liking that really, really well. So, and I wanna be able to get more colors on here. So what I wanna put is a saying here and then I wanna put flowers over here that are growing from the ground. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do, maybe I'll get, I've got a brown stabilo and maybe some kind of a, that's kind of a neutrally color and maybe that would be kind of a, a sandy color. These don't have color names. I'm not even sure what that is stuck to my, well, it's stuck fast. Whatever this is, we'll leave it. Okay, so I'm going to build up a place and I'm, I'm just scribbling to get pigment down where I'm going to put these flowers coming, growing up out of the ground. Now these don't move as well as stabil as um I'm sorry as the gelatos and I knew that would be the case but that's okay I want to mix a few colors in just to give it a little interest and then this one on the top here and there's nothing sealing this paper yet the um Gelato has some wax in it, so that's going to act a little bit sealing, but I still should be able to work on top of all of this. Okay, so I've got those colors down, and I'm going to grab a brush, a watercolor brush. This is a, I call this just a square, and I'm wetting it, and I've kind of pounced down some of the water, and let's get this on here. And if there's still some swirly marks, I'm okay. That's all, that's all right. But I'm just trying to, it's going to be kind of like an area of some dirt. And I'm going to stretch it out into the border on each side. So my water is going to pick up some of this blue as I do that, which is great. I don't mind that at all. And I think having the different colors in there, it just gives it more interest. Okay, I like that real well. We're gonna let this dry. Should I run it right off the edge? I think so. Yeah, good, okay. All right, there, let's rinse this brush out. And like I said, we're gonna let that dry. And I'll show you what I have. I just drew some flowers on an old dictionary and I just drew them with Sharpie and I colored them up with gelatos and I made five and you know they could run over but I don't know that they need to we'll just see we'll just see how it goes but that's kind of the idea for this side for the flowers and maybe they'll be a little bit taller. I'm not sure, but you know, just to give you an idea of what I've got going on. Okay, now I wanna just put some more background in, in something that says flowers. That's obviously my goal. So I've got my inks and this is a four, four color and it is the archival even though it's the Tim Holtz color so there's vintage photo black soot hickory smoke ground espresso this is a brown color this is almost black if not black this is like a brown black and this is even a darker brown black so they're very um what would you call that like uh basic neutrals you know they're not blue green red and what I want to do is I'm just going to put some flowers. I don't care if it's a high quality printing. I just want to add some texture and some interest. So I'm going to put them and they're not going to be like, oh, well, here's where a flower garden is. No, I want to have them in a lot of different places, but I do want them to kind of melt into the background. So here's another flower and um, right now I've been in the vintage photo. I'll head over here and do this one in the hickory smoke. Get a little different color going on there. And like I said, these are not perfect stamps. I'm just wanting the 
little bits of flower here and there. I think I'll do one more. Maybe this guy. Go back to the vintage. No, this is black soot. Okay, so this is going to be strong. Well, it's not too bad. It's not overwhelming. Okay, I like that. That's good. And now another thing that I want to add to the background is, and I don't need, well, I could use this. It, it doesn't stick. I'd have to glue it on. I'm just trying to think. What do I want? I think I'm just going to use my hand. And this is just, this is work. Now, I, I cannot tell you for sure. And I bought this years ago. Can't tell you where. But it's supposed to be French. And it's supposed to be regarding botanicals. I just like it because it's, it's script and it makes a good wordy background. So I'm just going in and I am not paying attention to what part of the stamp I'm using or anything like that. I'm just trying to get some interest, some, some more visual texture in the background. I tend to ignore the corners, so I'm trying to be mindful of that and get some of these in the corners. A couple more, I think. I used the bottom, so I'm going to use the top up here. One more? Sure. Okay. I'm liking that so far. I'm liking that real well. And I haven't decided. I've got some stamps. This, and this one's coming apart. Ooh. Ranger and Tim Holtz. Just so you know, because I've never used this stamp yet. But it's coming off of its stamping foam. This is a stem. And this is a stem with leaves. And I haven't decided if I'm going to use those or if I'm just going to draw my own. I haven't decided, but I do have them on the on the on the weight. So, all right. So far, I am liking this. Like I said, I'm going to put a phrase in here, and I'm going to put the flowers in here. I think I'm going to go ahead and get my flowers on there. What do you say? I've got my glue stick. I forgot a glue page. I'm looking around. I just emptied my trash, wouldn't you know? But I think I can find something in here. Yes. All right. This will be fine. They're not doing that much. But I don't want to glue on top of there. That's for sure. This glue stick's almost gone, but I've got more. So let's think about this just a little bit. These were done, believe it or not. One of these is a pink color. One of these is supposed to be a lilac color. They all came out pink to me. So I only have one that's kind of this orange. So I want him to be more on the top. So I think I want this one to be a little bit more under. So I'll start with him. You know, you may have some favorite phrases, maybe some scripture, maybe something that's just kind of your credo or what you, little sayings, cleocleal sayings that maybe you grew up with. And this kind of a, of a journal project, it's, it just can be a way that you can be sharing that memory or that thought with the world or not, or just with your journal. You know, it just, I don't know who you're showing your journal to, if anyone. I mean, obviously, I take pictures of mine, and they go, hopefully, a lot of places. But not everyone does that, and that's fine. Very fine. I think that might be a good spot for this one. So we've got these two. Maybe we'll put that one there. If you know how your little saying came about, if you know who invented it or whatever, it's always nice to give credit, um, but uh, you, you don't always know. Just don't always know. 
think I want a little bit over that. Part of it stuck right to me. It's a joy of glue sticks, but that's okay. I can't even tell you from where. <laughs> All right, let's see. Maybe this one more up here. I think so. This is awfully fragile. So that's another reason why I wanted a kind of a designated place to put the glue on because they're fragile. They're kind of crisp, but they're such a pretty color from age. And I like the super fine print that it, that it has. So we're getting those guys on. And now I've got this guy. He kind of ties it all together, I think. It's good. Have you joined any Facebook groups yet? There's so many. And now, you know, if, if um, Instagram has something like that, I'm really not familiar. Quite honestly, Instagram is changing well, on social media in, in, in a whole, but Instagram, it used to be pretty much pictures and maybe a few words. Well, now there's videos and there's just so much more. And I'm just not exactly sure what they want from me. Do you know what I mean? What, what are people really expecting that for you to post? And then I do have a Facebook account and sometimes they want to kind of put them both on, you know, like, you know, share it with both. And I think I say yes to pretty much all of it, unless I know I've already posted it on the other one. So yeah, if you say, yeah, you've got this posted twice, or it, it doesn't surprise me, but please, if you can help me out with that kind of thing, I don't want to look like a dodo any more than I already do. Okay. I think I've got all those little fingers. Oh no, a few more. Like I said, I just want to be careful. I'm getting my fingers more gluey. That's always a challenge. That's okay. Boy, did I put glue on it anywhere? Good grief. Thought I did. All right, well, we're gonna call that glued down. So there is our flowers. Nice. And I still haven't decided about these stems. Now, yes, these stems are long, but I could kind of, you know, tuck it in here and there. And I think I'm going to draw them, though. And that's one of the reasons why is the one with leaves, the leaves are so, I don't know, kind of puny. So I think I'm going to put these aside and we'll call that done. And I'm going to draw in. I can still add some color to them. Uh, all I brought, though, was watercolor crayons. All right, this side. So how am I going to do this side? Well, what I want to say on here is bloom where you are planted. And so I have to kind of decide how big I'm going to use. This This is um, Dilutions. Uh, by Ranger and it is from Diane Reevely and it's one of her rulers. This thing is great. I use it for a lot of things and it's made out of a good acrylic. It's not plasticky, but it's, it's like almost like plexiglass, a little more flexible than that. So I was thinking bloom would be on one line bloom. Oh, did, maybe I didn't even tell you bloom where you are planted. So I'm a bloom and then where you, maybe where you are, and then planted to be a big word again. You know what I think I should do? I think I should work it out on a piece of plain paper first. I'm looking around. Hold that thought. Okay, I'm back. So what I have is my journaling by fives, but I've got this paper left in the back. So I think I'm just going to grab a couple of sheets of this. She says, all right, now let's kind of plan this out a little bit. I'm gonna get this out of the way 
and I've got my ruler here. So if I want to do bloom, and I am I am not going to be like trying to measure this out with any with any perfection. So the bloom, and I'm gonna give it a little bit of a margin. And then this would be how big I want the bloom. And again, a little bit of the margin. And then this one will be where you are. So let's just give it like this and a margin. Now, doesn't have to be as wide as that first one and a margin and I'm planning to do this on pencil and I'm hoping I'll be able to erase the pencil marks if not I can't okay so bloom then this will be where you are and then this will be planted I should have made this a little bit bigger well let's just see how it goes and I can still so I'm going to just take a Sharpie because that's the way I plan to do it. So B-L-O-O-M, that's five. The middle word, the middle letter is O, B-L-O and then O-M. So I'm going to make an O and I am not some kind of a calligrapher. B-L-O, so here's another O and then an M. And so the L and the B. There's the bloom. And now where you are planted, where you are planted, that's four. So let's see, where you, so it's the U R that's going to be in the middle. Okay. So these will be smaller. So we'll put the U and the R, and then the planted. Okay, where you needs to go here. That should have been moved in, but that's okay. So bloom where you are, oh no. I did that all wrong. See, it's a good thing that we're doing it together. All right, I'll give it one more go. And I'm not even going to redo the lines. I think I can see them through if I just go down to one page. Yeah, all right. So I want the bloom. And this is where you are. So I'm going to start, the R needs to go here. No. Oh, Julie. Try again. Last call. See, that's why these things don't go so fast. Let's see. B L O O. Um, the pen's dying, but that's okay. R, so it's U in the middle. Y O U W H E R E, where you are. And now planted is the one. So it's P L A N T E D. P L A N T E D. That's seven. So it's going to be three. P L A, and the N will be in the middle. N. So it's P-L-A over here, A-L-P, P-L-A-N-T-E-D. Okay, and the bloom can move down, but I'm, I've got the idea. Have I practiced enough? Ooh. Yep.
All right, bring up the book. Put away the Sharpie. And here we go. Where are we? Here we are. Okay, so I want the where you are to kind of be in the middle. So is that about the middle? I think so. Okay, so we're going to... And that's where the words are going to rest. So I'm going to give this a little margin. And then I'm going to go above it. And I think I'll give the margin under. I think I was kind of generous with that. I'm lowering my voice because I'm concentrating. Sorry. Okay, so now bloomed is up here, and I'm going to give it just a little bit more room. Up a little bit. This may turn out looking like a dog's dinner, but we're going to give it a try. Bloom where you are, and now planted. I want that one to be bigger again. and bring it down for a little margin. And then it's gonna be it, folks. Cause I'm going right in with the Sharpie. Let's not make any mistakes, okay? Deal, deal. All right, Sharpie, I'm picking a different one. Hopefully this one is gonna work a little better and I can give it a little test. Well, seems promising. All right, so, Let's bring this up, not that it's perfect, but, so I need an O in the middle. And another O. And the M. And then over here is the L and the B. Okay, and now the where you are. So the you is in the middle. And then the R. And the where. I made two different kinds of E's, that's okay. Bloom where you are and now planted and the N is in the middle. And then the T, E, D, and then the A, and the L, and the P. There. Bloom where you are planted. Now, we're going to need to beef it up a little bit, and we will. So, and I like that. I like the balance. I think it came out good. All right, the first thing I think I'm going to do is I've got my, my white block eraser. Oh, I'm going to leave. Ooh, I, want to, I wanted to, do I want to fill in those lines? I don't think so. I'm going to take them. I was thinking that I was going to sort of create a border with these lines, but I don't think so. No, I think the, the words are going to be enough and we've got enough space that I don't think they're going to be running into each other. So let's just get these lines out. I've always said I am not one of these people that say you can't erase. I was never an art teacher that way when I've had classes. You can erase. Otherwise, ooh, wouldn't you be a nervous wreck? I'm already a nervous wreck, and I know I can erase. It does seem like after you erase, at, at time, after some time, the lines go away. I don't know if it's that you forget where they are or if the paper kind of recovers, but it at first... It, it almost seems like you didn't get something very well erased, and yet it does go away. I'm just going to tip this over my trash. 
Okay, now I want to beef up these letters. And all I'm just gonna do to start out with is make them thicker. So I'm just gonna follow the lines I already have and just sort of smooth them out, round them out, or maybe straighten them out, whatever I feel like it could use and just make them a little more robust. Like I think this O is big enough, so I'm filling it in on the inside instead of the outside. And it, these are not perfect. I am not a professional letterer by any imagination. And nobody ever said, oh, your handwriting's so beautiful. No, that's not me. A lot of things I can do. That's not one of them. And maybe if I practiced, anything can be learned. Wouldn't mind learning it. If there was some kind of a printing class or something, I'd, I'd take it, sure. I think I'm going to leave the where you are for now and work on the planted and just see where we get with that. Are you liking this double page spread? I hope so. Tell me in the comments. Do you have a, a, a famous saying or a little phrase or something that kind of gets you through the day? I'd love to hear it. Or maybe it's one of those sayings that your mom always said and you never thought you'd use it and now you are. I think we all have a few of those in our kit sacks, don't we? Sure we do. Yep, I'm liking this. I'm liking the way it, it's filling in. Very much. Now this is Sharpie permanent marker, but it will shift and move if you get it wet right away. So you want to let it have a little time to kind of sit and set before you start working on top of it. So I'm going to let it have that little bit of time. And I like that very, very much. I think the P could be a little longer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can still goof with it as time goes on. We'll see. All right. Now, our flowers and the stems. All right, I'm going to grab, not that one. This is a Sharpie that I got at an art supply store, not a craft store. And it's a brush tip. Nope, that's not the one. Brush tip. There we go. Then I'm going to use that. Now, I've got a flower here. And I want to bring it down. You never want a flower that's just kind of hanging out in space. And then we've got this guy. And they don't have to stop right at the top of the dirt. And now we've got this guy who's going to pretty much be a straight up and down one. We've got this guy. And these are large flower heads, so we're going to give them some robust stems. I'm just widening this one out a little bit. Okay, that's good. I'm giving them like a little foot. Good. How about some leaves? They're fantasy flowers, so their leaves can definitely be fantasy. <laughs> that one kind of got a little crooked, but that's okay. And another one. Mm 
another leaf. How about maybe this one has leaves that, and maybe even a couple of stems along with him. And maybe his leaf is just kind of long this way. And we'll put his leaf in here. I think that's getting crowded enough. But maybe some of those longer leaves have sort of stuck out there. And maybe one of those heart-shaped leaves worked its way up here. Might have. Number no. Yeah. That looks okay to me. Doesn't hurt to have a leaf over here, I think. Maybe even more than one. Let's see. Heart shape. There we go. All right, so let's get some green on these leaves. Some, some kind of a green. The stabilos are handy. Got two greens here. So I'm gonna add some green and we're gonna activate it with water. A Little bit smaller of a brush than that big old square brush. We'll use a smaller square brush. Now the pink underneath, if I got enough water going, it would reactivate. But since it's been several hours since I made that background, it's not going to move just, you know, quite that easy. It, it's not. All right, so let's give this leaf, and we'll give it a couple of colors. Maybe the light's just hitting it a little different. And let's get some water. I like that. What do you think? I might have enough on this brush just to go ahead and fill in this leaf. I believe I do. Okay. I think I'm going to make these longer, skinnier leaves the light color. All right, let's get those colored up here. Some water. And again, I am not trying to like just force myself to stay in the lines. And, no, not at all. I might even make a leaf. I don't quite have enough pigment. Just make a leaf without even any black around it at all. Kind of a, kind of a little shadow leaf. That can be cool. Yeah, that's good. Okay, using the lighter green for these two long ones. Touch of water, and I'm, I'm using, once I got my brush wet, I'm using very little water. It doesn't take a lot to activate most of these crayons, these watercolor crayons. And I've got these two over here, and I'll do one side with the lighter and the other side with the darker. How's it looking? Are you hanging in there with me? I know we're getting into some time here, but these things take time. They really do. Sometimes people think that when people have their videos all sped up and, and, and edited out that the 15 minutes was really what it took. No, these people have dry time. They've got, um, sometimes you'll see them start on, on a few letters and then the next thing you know, they've got the whole word on there. I mean, it just, and you know, that's there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, those are fun videos too, but I'm trying to show you how it can really go. All right, so the bloom where you are planted, maybe, I don't think I want flowers, but maybe a couple of leaves in there. 
I think that could be nice. I'm grabbing, I think I'm going to grab my other black Sharpie. And I think what I'll do is just put it like this. And let's get this heart in the right spot, huh? Maybe one over here. And one over here. Are you seeing what I'm doing? This one is just going to be a small one, a little baby leaf. Okay. And maybe... couple out here like that okay I like that maybe I'll put a little of that yeah good okay little more with the green. Now this black may shift a little bit on me. I, I'm not worried. We'll just let it shift. And get our other green. I'm just getting pigment on. And now get the, the brush and I'm going to go in the light ones first. I like a square brush because you can use the corner and do fine work. You can flatten it out and you can do like, you know, get more ground covered. It's so versatile. And now I'm not rinsing my brush. I'm just going to add a little water and I'm going to go into the dark now. Move it around. Okay. And if you get too much water, the only part of that is just that you have a greater chance of, for one thing, overloading your paper but for another is uh, lifting up the, the background. And again, it's not a catastrophe, but it's just something I'm mindful of. Last one. Okay. I like that. Oh, this is just coming out even, even better than I kind of pictured in my mind. All right. I want to get a border. I like borders on these kinds of things. So what I'm going to do, I'm putting that big old ruler away, get one of my Sharpies, and I've also got my Pascas. So I've got the white, but I think I'm going to start with black. And I think, hmm, I think I'm going to do kind of a ribbony border. I'm going to put a circle in each corner, sort of a start and a stop. And this I can feel it's getting dry. So I'm going to put it down once I get those on. Get another one. So I always got more than one. And one that worked yesterday won't work today. And one that worked today won't work tomorrow. It just, I don't know. The first time it doesn't work though. Don't pitch it. Just let it sit upside down in your holder and see what happens. The other thing you can do is you can get some good alcohol, like some 90 or above percent alcohol, and you can dip the, the nib in there and, and reactivate the ink that's left inside. If there's no ink, it won't hurt it. It just won't do anything. All right, I'm going to put, like I said, a ribbon. So I'm just going to bring it 
like that and start here, but it can cross over like that. All right, another ribbon. There, another ribbon over here. Connect it up. Good. And I'm going to turn my book around. And one last ribbon. There. Okay. Are they the same? Not all. I'm bumping things around because I dropped my lid on the floor and I'm rescuing it with my foot. Okay, now let's turn it around. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make this border a white and black. So I'm grabbing another Sharpie and we'll see where we get with it. I'm just gonna thicken up the inner circle or these round circles and just Make them a little bit wider. And then I'll make the, the center part white. But I'm not going to do that just yet. And over here. Okay. Now, I am going to do lines like this and then I'm going to be filling in every other one with white black white black and I am not worried about being exact in these sections you know I'm not measuring it not at all and so that mark was not my crazy, I'm not crazy about either. Let's see. Did I use every one that I brought out? I brought four. What's, what's this one doing? Let's give it a try. You can, oh yeah. So I'm going to, when I'm, where you can see me, fill this box in. And now they are not going to be too crazy about working on top of the, Gelatos. Now the ink doesn't care, but it's the nib because there is a little bit of waxiness, but not a whole lot, not a whole lot. So I'm just going to work this to the middle point and then I'll add the white so that you can kind of see. Okay. Now I'm going to grab the white and is it going to be Posca? I think some of it's going to be Posca and some of it's going to be white jelly roll, just depending on the size of the space I have. So I'm going to put the white here. And again, I'm going to avoid doing a lot of scrubbing because I will pick up the blue with this wet Posca. And Poscas are, I think I'll save that one for the jelly roll. Poscas are just an acrylic pen. The one I'm using is called fine tip, but they do have even a finer tip one. But I like them. But there are other good acrylic markers. Okay, so then this one, see I'm just doing this where it's real little. I think the Posca even though it says it's fine point, I think it would struggle. Yep. All right. Well, I've got this in my hand. This next one is smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then now that you see what I'm doing, I'm going to go ahead and finish. And then I'll come back when I have this border done. How does that sound? Because you can see what I'm doing. So I'll see you in just a bit. 
Okay, welcome back. So I got this edge done, and there's just a couple places that the pigment underneath, after it had a minute to dry, just kind of lifted up inside. And so I'm just touching some of those areas a second time. Like right here is one that the pink really rose up. So I'm just giving it kind of a second coat. But I think this is coming out just fine. So what I thought I would do, just to keep it going a little bit more, I think it could use a little bit of punch on the words. So on the bloom and the planted, I'm just gonna put some dots in the letters, just like this. Not huge, just tiny little white dots. And I think it'll bring the whole black and white feeling into the rest of the page. So we'll see what you think, but it, it definitely is going to make a difference. It's one of those things that makes you say, well, I like the page, but you don't necessarily realize why. And it is these little details that just make it so sweet. So I wanted to bring you along while I put, now compare that with the planted. You can see the difference. And I'm just using a jelly roll pen in white. Bought them from Amazon. I honestly can't tell you who the specific sales, you know, the Amazon has a lot of different little companies that ship things to them and then they ship it to us. Sometimes you get it shipped right from the little company. I can't tell you which little company, but I can remember finding it. It was, a, I think, a pack of 10 or 12, and it was only about a dollar a pen, which is quite good. So I got myself several. Thing about jelly roll pens or any of these kinds of inky colored pens, once they're open the first time and you're using them, especially the ones that have a little tip that you have to kind of knock off that little ball. Once they're open, their lifetime is starting to tick away. So I've only got two going ever at a time. And then I work hard to not drag it through wet acrylic because that can get into the little ball mechanism and it is pretty hard to correct it. I've never successfully corrected it. Oh, it'll work through the project that you're on at the time. But then the next time you go to use it, that little ball will be glued fast with the acrylic paint. And even though it felt dry to you, maybe you used a glue gun and you, you know, patted the paper and it felt dry. If it's not had time to really cure, it just has a dry skin and these pens gouge into that skin and they get paint in their mechanisms and it, it just stops them cold. That's why you'll see people, oh, you know, I don't know why this pen doesn't work. And well, that's probably why. They're dragging it through wet mediums, particularly acrylic type mediums. Uh, I think though something like oil pastels can do the same thing. Okay, so I didn't do the where you are. Am I okay with it? I just don't know if they're big enough, if they would be okay. I'm trying to think, I'm trying to picture it in my mind, what I think it would look like. I think I'm gonna try. I think I'm gonna try to put the dots in. Now I gotta be careful to not drag over these dots. Are these dots? They, they take a minute to dry. All right, let's just clean the pen off a little bit. If you can't see what I'm doing, I'm really sorry. But my pen might be more in the way than it should be. And that's because I'm holding it up to not drag it into the letters below. Yeah, I think this is fine. Yep.
I'm trying to space them out a little more than I did on the bigger letters so it doesn't overwhelm. You can let me know in the comments if you think I was successful. Okay. Yes. Bloom where you are planted. Be, be content with where you are. I like it. I hope that you like it. I hope that maybe you learned something or maybe you were inspired to work in your art journal. If you did, I hope that you'll hit the like, consider subscribing, and maybe even sharing my video. We're working towards our contest for August the 5th, so it's a giveaway because I've gone over 100 subscribers. In the meantime, I will see you in my next video. Bye now.